So our next panel is on DSLs and IRs for ZK circuits. Yeah, these are all um, implementers and authors of some very popular ZK DSLs and IRs. Um, and so today we're going to get together and um, I've prepared a few high-level questions here. I'm going to read them out. Um, so the first one is sort of an exercise to locate each other on the language stack and see how we relate to each other. And the second afterwards is to then figure out um, to what extent can we share infrastructure or should we even try? Um, is it impossible after a certain point? Um, and over here I want to note also a lot of prior work from the compiler and SMT verifier communities. So can we also reuse some of their work? And then lastly, I had a high level question about you know, what programming in ZK should look like? What's your ideal DSL? Is it very different from normal programming? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so just keep these in your head. And I think I want to save maybe 25 minutes for audience questions at the end. So I think let's start with a round of introductions. Um, I have like, <coughs> I have pre-prepared some visuals for you um, in case you need them. So the first first one is PIL, Jordi. So can you give us an introduction to what PIL is? Well, PIL is a language mainly. It's, PIL means polynomial identity language. And mainly what it is, is when you define a, um, a circuit that's based on polynomials, for example, a plonk is an example of a way of uh, um, um, a circuit uh, that's based on polynomials, but you can do much more things, much more complex uh, that are based in polynomials. The spill allows you to just write those identities and then out of those identities just build the proof automatically, the same way that you do in a normal uh, zero knowledge language, the same way that you do it in Circum, you can do it in PIL. Here you need to do something else because you need to maybe bright the witness somehow, but it's just a, a kind of abstraction where you can just focus in writing what are the identities uh, that you want to fulfill. And yeah, this is mainly what's spill. And Jordi also is the author of CIRCOM, um, which is a very another popular library. So how does PIL relate to CIRCOM? Well, PIL is for polynomials and circuit is more for uh, signals you are just working. We are not working with polynomials at all. You are just building, uh, um, you have just uh, signals and you just cons build constraints around those signals, not constraints around polynomials. So um, the idea of Circum is, uh, it's, Circum is a low level language because you can write every, every, every um, every um, circuit you can write it in Circum. Circum does not have any <laughs> special library, right? Uh, you need any plugin special. So all the Circum is written in Circum. So it's uh, the, yeah, on there. But at the same time, is um, a high level language because it allows you connection. So you can have you have blocks and, and then you connect blocks. Small blocks you do big blocks. Big blocks you do a bigger blocks. And so in this sense, you can go all the way down uh, and all the way up. Uh, on Circum. That's why it's so flexible and then it connects very good with uh, SnarkJS and other uh, proving systems and yeah, it has been there for years, has been already a full rewrite. We now introduce uh, introduce it, uh, all new, these new extensions of the language, it's mainly um, mainly our templ uh, anonymous templates and we also are, are adapting to Plonk because Circum was born in the R1CS uh, era. Okay, and now, but in Novo works perfectly in Plonk. So we have also custom gates, and yeah, we're extending uh, the language, and it's a full community that's working on there. Thanks, Jordi. So, yeah, to me, it's interesting this um, distinction between um, a language for polynomials versus for signals. And I'm going to skip to Noir because, as I understand it, Noir can target both Plonk and R1CS and Air and even more backends. So, Kev, what's Noir about? Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, so Noir is a, a lot more high level. 
Uh, it compiles it compiles down to something called a SIR. Uh, and essentially, you never tell the proving system how to do something. Uh, you just tell it what you want to do. Uh, so for example, uh, if you want to do a SHA-256, uh, you don't tell it to use custom gates. The proving system just decides uh, what's the best way to do it. Uh, so in this way, we're sort of uh, back-end agnostic uh, fully. Uh, so for example, you'll never see like uh, custom gates inside of NOIR or any sort of that syntax or lookup tables. Uh, you might see maps, for example. Uh, so yeah. Cool. Um, I'll just go around. I have questions. But I'll just go around the intros first. Um, so this is the picture I found for Cairo. I really apologize. I'm sure that better pictures exist, but. <laughs> yeah, I feel this is the best <laughs> ever produced, 100%. Uh, um, so <clears throat> yeah, so, so I guess Cairo deferred to um, uh, to some extent. I, I won't be able to actually uh, go into how much difference, but Cairo is just a Turing complete language. Uh, so you were writing Cairo, you were the same way you were writing Solidity or in any smart contract language that you can think of. So um, from the perspective of, of Cairo, you write a program. This program is compiled to a Cairo bytecode, which is run into the Cairo VM and proof uh, among all the programs that are proven within the same proof. Um, so, in that sense, it's like there is not things much, not much difference. You don't have things now. You don't have lookups. You just have like, um, you know, the program. And, and sometimes, for some operation, we do have this notion of built-in, but built-in are just something you call as, as part of the function. Cool. Um, and the best for last, <laughs> Kimchi slash Snarky JS, um, Brandon. Hello. Um, thank you. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is Snarky JS with a Y, different from Snark JS. Had a few people confused this week. Um, That's trending. Yeah. Uh, you know, name name might evolve. I don't know. Um, so uh, yeah. So Kimchi is our is the proof system that Snarky JS is built on top of uh, right now. Um, the way that it's built, we can plug into other proof systems we just haven't yet. Um, Kimchi is the proof system that is in uh, Mina, or well, in in the testnet of Mina that will be hard forked pending community voting. Um, but the idea is, I mean, Kimchi is a, a Planck 15 type proof system. It has no trusted setup. Um, it's universal, uh, and uh, we support like infinite efficient recursion, which is important for Mina, the succinct blockchain. Um, but it, but the cool thing is, you can also use this proof system to build uh, custom ZKPs, which are our smart contracts on Mina, um, and uh, and you can build circuits outside of Mina as well. So uh, I I don't know. There's not much in this picture I want to explain. I guess the the one really important thing about Snarky JS, you can see on the top left there, um, the the code snippet. Um, it is TypeScript um, and it is extremely high level language, um, and and there's this sort of uh, I guess there's a lot of reasons why we designed it the way we did. Um, I'll just point out a couple things. One is we get all the tooling and infrastructure and ecosystem that comes with TypeScript. Um, so, you know, NPM is great, VS Code is great, all the integrations already work and are good. Um, and uh, we think that, you know, when people are writing uh, zero knowledge proofs uh, or, or writing any programs, like the model that people are used to thinking about computations is, you know, you have a function, it takes some input, and you produce some output. So one of the things that SnarkyJS does is it lets you write your computations with your circuits at the same time, and the output of those functions gets sort of fed in as a public input automatically for you. So in the end, your, your code actually looks like normal code. Cool, thank you. So I'm going to start with an opinionated question, which is um, what is... What do you think of um, intermediate representations? So, Circe is this project um, that's inspired very much by LLVM. <laughs> and everyone's turning to look at the screen, but so the idea behind that is to define a common standard IR um, to which many different front ends compile 
and from which many back end, many different backends can compile. So how well do you think your project would fit into a model like that? Okay. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you want to? Okay. Yeah, I'll start. I mean, yeah, so so uh, Snarky JS is, like I said, like super high level, um, and right now it's directly connected to Kimchi, but um, we could and probably should connect to some intermediate representation so that uh, we can, you know, share that work of connecting to custom backends. In the case of uh, Circum, actually it exports to two different languages, Wasm and C. Uh, Internally, it has an, an intermediate representation already, is uh, Circum 1, so exporting that to other language like Rust or like Go is in the, in the roadmap. And uh, okay, exporting to maybe some other intermediate representation, if it looks like uh, good enough, uh, that's, uh, that's, that would be definitely possible here. I'm not sure about the specification. I have not read it yet. But for example, there are things that uh, how you parallelize uh, witness computation. In Circom, we have a way that you have different components. And because there are components, you can say that you know, this component, this component is, 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 can be running parallel. So the witness computation can be running parallel. This is very important, especially when you're doing big circuits. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe some somebody that's expert in that would that would be maybe an answer for for, for them. But it's uh, sometimes there are details uh, there that are not that that easy. Yeah. Um, so in, in the context of Cairo, um, so it, it won't really it won't work. Um, I mean, because Cairo as of now doesn't have internet representation and directly generated by. Basically, it's just a very high level. You know, like a bit like C is. Of, you know, not the representation, it's just like compared to assembly. And Cairo itself, Cairo, the current version, at least to just directly generate the bytecode. That said, Cairo, we have Cairo 1 coming in a couple of months. Uh, and Cairo 1 has, does have something called Sierra. And Sierra is, which literally means safe intermediate representation. And the purpose of Sierra is to enable uh, the language to turn deterministic, actually. So Cairo is non-deterministic, but Sierra will make it deterministic because when you make a language for an L1 or for, for, for an L2, for, you know, for blockchain itself, you want determinism. You want determinism for a very specific reason, actually, which is you want to be able to prove fair transactions. Uh, without determinism, uh, you're screwed with, for that. And so we, for now, we don't have it, and it is of these, those vector. That we control by uh, making by right now whitelisting the contract, but tomorrow when we're going to go for permissionlessness and then the decentralization, you can obviously do that. So we are working to have this safe intermediate representation, which will be deterministic, and this uh, intermediate step will be able to actually compile to multiple backends. So either Cairo or like you know optimize for x86 for execution layer and potentially something like this, but. In that case, you will probably lose much of what you're gaining and what you want. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't see, I don't know if it's practical to, to compile for. I, I, I don't know about Cersei, but I would be, it's a great name for Stark, by the way. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know, uh, I don't expect, so I don't know if you could do that. Yeah, uh, so we did once have an effort to integrate uh, a SEER with Cersei. Uh, we dropped it just due to priorities. Uh, from what I remember, it was fairly easy if we extend Cersei to have uh, these black box functions, uh, just because the Cersei IR just can't optimize uh, for these black box functions. Um, so yeah, it's possible. Uh, we just haven't picked back up on it. Yeah, I I think NOR is probably the sh newest, shiniest language. Like it just dropped, um, and I'm I have lots of questions about it. ACIR. ACIR is NOIR's intermediate representation. So it can compile both to R1CS and Planck. Um, so how does this IR capture both of these um, very different arithmetizations? Um, <clears throat> uh, essentially, uh, you have these arithmetic gates, which are just linear expressions, uh, which aren't bounded. Uh, so for R1CS, that's quite simple to compile down to for Plunk because you usually have like width four or some uh, fixed width. 
uh, we have something in a seer which uh, basically chops the gates into the perfect width uh, for Plonk. Uh, for the black box functions, uh, it's really just the, the proving system just uh, takes in the witness indices and just fills in the constraints for them. Uh, so it's it's quite simple uh, what it's doing. It's not doing anything complicated. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Brandon, did you have thoughts um, on the uh, IR thing? Yeah. Well, I uh, I think I spoke in the in the beginning a bit. I mean, right. yeah. I uh, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't have anything else to add. Um, cool. Um, so what I'm hearing is like basically compiling to an IR. You could stand to lose some. Um, some very specific performance optimizations, uh, unless the the IR allows you to black box things easily. Cool. Um, I did have a question for Louis as well. What do you mean when you say uh, Cairo is not deterministic and that your IR is deterministic? So 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 on Cairo today, so proof and you know, DKPs or language engineering are just deterministic. You can you know, create hint and and that break determinism, um, but we, we, Cairo today is not deterministic. So, for them to be more specific, we actually have two flavors of Cairo. Uh, what we like, what I like to call pure Cairo, which is the one you would just directly prove a program within, within Sharp, or Sharp being the Sharp prover uh, infrastructure that we provide, or, um, or um, that's your pure Cairo. And what StarkX is, uh, StarkX is built on, and even StarkNet itself is built with. And you have what we call StarkNet Cairo. And StarkNet Cairo does have a notion of state, does have a notion of like a syscall and plenty of things that you get from the OS itself. So you have like Cairo for a StarkNet, you have Cairo for a pure Cairo. So the thing is that the Cairo for StarkNet cannot be non-deterministic. And that is for a very pure incentive reason. Because if you don't have determinism that you can make transactions that are not provable, Meaning I'm the only one who knows that this transaction is valid and I'm the only one who knows the hint and therefore the rest of the world cannot prove it. And so for instance, let's give an example that people like to use. You know, I want to do a forced transaction for mail one, you know, being that optimistic roll-up push, I mean, talks a lot about. Um, then in this context with determinism, I can't, this is a dose factor because I don't know if the transaction that's getting pushed to me is provable by me. I don't know that. And so, and another thing that is important is that fair transaction. So, fair transaction can be valid. You know, the, the price of this pool on Uniswap move, and therefore my transaction failed. And otherwise, it can be uh, malicious. So, I'm spamming the network with transaction, hoping to get what I want. But if I don't, I don't think I don't pay anything. And so, I can spam the network, run everything, and I need to run it. And so, creating dust vector. So, for Starknet, we have to make Cairo deterministic, or I mean, the version of Cairo for StarkNet will be deterministic for that purpose. And to make it deterministic, we need to prove that the program was compiled into a deterministic version of Cairo, which is a safe intermediate representation called Sierra. And this Sierra will compile to Cairo itself. And so Sierra itself will be proven within StarkNet. When I'm deploying a contract, I will be proving to the StarkNet that this contract was compiled with using Sierra. So this is what I mean by Carol become deterministic in that context. I see. Thank you. Um, cool. So I guess my next question. I guess my next question is uh, number three, which is, yeah, when you were writing your languages, what features did you prioritize. So, for example, um, Noir is very Rust-like. They even have a version of Cargo called Nargo. Um, and then uh, Snarky.js is like TypeScript. Um, Cairo is also a pretty high level. Yeah, it's mixed. Right now it's a mix of C and Python to some extent. C and Python, But yeah. right, the new version will be very Rust-like, right. which is coming in, like I say, three months, two months. Right. And for example, Gnark was just written directly in Go. Um, Halo 2 is written directly in Rust, um, but, but Pill and Circom are like kind of closer to the metal. I think so is Halo, uh, the metal, the circuit, I mean, um, and so is Halo 2. So, yeah, what are your thoughts on uh, the trade-offs between like higher level representations and lower level representations? And um, how did you, you know, decide on the designs that you did? 
um, and we can maybe start. So the first, that's actually an interesting story from from uh, from Starkware experience. Experience. So the first version of Starkex. So Starkex was and uh, is the first product in Starkware did, which is basically a centralized but non-custodial backend for uh, dApps who need scalability. So you know, customers are DYDX, Diversify, uh, Immutable, and SoRare. And so the first version was written, you know, very low level, literally in polynomes. Uh, and, and this thing does transfer and, and swaps. And so we started to work in Cairo, it was 2019, and it became production ready uh, in, uh, in May 2020. Um, the first case of actually uh, where we used it uh, for was for the Reddit uh, Bake Off in June 2020. Um, and so um, the funny story that the improve the performance of the of the system massively improved when we started using Cairo because it was much higher level and it could had a lot more flexibility in the way we could reason about the system in the way we could write about the system. Not only was it gain in velocity, in velocity but also gain in actual pure performance. And so. Um, there is, you know, in, in some, I mean, of, and when you need that performance improvement, we have these things that are built in the same, built in as the equivalent to Cairo to um, those specific chip on your CPU, like the one that does 64 bits modular multiplication. And so, if you really need like optimization at the very low level for a specific operation, like say proving, um, right now we did it for the KCHAC, we did it for um, um, for um, uh, for uh, a series AC, ACDSA signatures, we end up range proof and other things, then we write them in those, and for the rest we just write in Cairo. And, and so there was not really any trade-off in any meaningful way except that much simpler and nicer to write. Now we are two. Yeah, that's interesting that like a higher level language actually improve your performance. But yeah, I guess so you're pushing a lot of the manual optimization to the compilers and like stuff that computers are better at. And then the commonly used so-called pre-compiles, um, you do handwrite that, right? Yeah, let's see. Um, when we started, when, when, when I started to write Circom, the main purpose is as I said before, is Circum is at, at the end, it's a low level language. So the idea is that if you are writing Circum, you should understand what you are doing. You should understand uh, uh, what's in the, what's behind the, the, the circuit. At upper level, of course, you can do things in a, in a high level because you can connect things. But the idea is that you have precise, and this is some, something that's very specific to Circum, is you it should not be any hidden constraint anywhere. So all the constraints are there. You can check the code. Maybe you need to go inside the circum leap or some place in the library, but you will find all the constraints there and you can track them and you can see them. So you can have full control of what you are doing. This of course is dangerous. I'm not saying that. That's why, because you know, you need to understand if you are, I've seen people that writing circum language that they don't know what they are writing. So it's not gonna work, okay? And this is, uh, we we uh, we understand this is a uh, a thing, but this is what circum is uh, for. Circum is for writing. Would say uh, circum is for people that understand what's happening underneath. That's the that, that, that's the thing. Okay. Um, said that, and uh, this is a little bit linking uh, with uh, what he said. Is I think that in the future nobody will have to write uh, circuits. And because uh, circuits is a very specific thing for, for things, and, and, and then you can write, you, you will be able to write things in, in Cairo, for example, or things in maybe some uh, high level, or even in, in Solidity. The CKBM at the end is a language that you're writing a language and you, you, you're building a zero knowledge, you're building a zero knowledge there. So you can, uh, there is other projects like RIS5 that are also building on top of that. So it's, uh, uh, the, the the ZKBM, uh, some, what brings um, behind to the to the to the world is that uh, you can um, have any any processor, any base, a RIS5, uh, uh, an EBM, as, uh, or um, Cairo like, or some some specific uh, uh, um, virtual machine, so some processor. And then you build on top of that processor. But the circuit is the processor. The circuit is like the hardware. Okay, so it's like, maybe we can talk about hardware language and software language. Uh, Circom is a hardware language, okay? And software language should be 
normal software language, C, uh, Solidity, uh, Python, uh, or any other language that builds on top of that. I don't see a space for, um, I don't see, but this is a, it's opinionated on me, but I don't see a space for uh, specific language, a specific high level language, because I think that already high level language should be enough to, to run on top of that. Can I just add one thing about what you said? Um, I tend to agree with the entire statement about high level language. There is one thing though, um, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure and I don't think necessarily that, you know, things like Python or Rust will run, enable you to write the KPs tomorrow because there is still a very strong paradigm, competing paradigm behind it, very strong differences, which might require you still to have like a different, uh, accepting that you're working on something different. Yeah, probably this is, but this is, this is at this point we are running fast there. So it's, uh, yeah. I think it's just a matter of uh, times and yeah, and how, how difficult it is, you know, right now, uh, depending is if you are, run, if you want to run a very, very complex uh, uh, language, a very complex thing, it's one thing, but uh, if it's complex, it's going to be also difficult to write a complex circuit. So I, I, I think the, the way to go is high level language. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I and my team have a very, very strong opinion about this. So I guess for, for background, um, so Mina, the, the Mina protocol, um, we started building it in uh, 2017. Um, and uh, for, for those that don't know, Mina basically is just like an enormous uh, like ZKP circuit that, that powers everything. So there's um, a recursive uh, a, a like linearly recursive proof for uh, compressing the blockchain that follows uh, you know the rules of the blockchains. Um, uh, there's like consensus logic. There's verifiable random functions where like uh, fractional numbers are approximated using like crazy uh, calculus things. Basically, enormous, enormous programs and and. Uh, enormous circuits, and and we realized very early on in 2017 that like we could not write the circuits manually, um, and and I agree. It's I, I would I would sort of I mean in some ways it's like it's like programming directly with hardware, but I, I think you can also kind of think of it metaphorically, like writing assembly language, um, and and you know you can't like. Uh, these days, when you're trying to write a really complex program, you don't use assembly language, you use a higher level language. So, um, so, we, so we built the first version of Snarky, which is an embedded OCaml DSL in 2017. Um, and uh, we used it for, and we still use it, uh, you know, whatever, how, five years, six years later. Um, and uh, it's great, and we've learned a lot. And, and the, the specific, um, you know, we, we've taken those ideas and brought them to Snarky JS, which is just sort of like bringing that into into TypeScript instead of OCaml. Um, the, uh, you know, we we thought about like, okay, if we could build a high level language that compiles into something and then like implement a bunch of optimizations, but the the landscape of proof systems is we thought would evolve quickly. It has evolved quickly. It continues to evolve quickly, um, and so uh, it makes sense right now. Um, I guess it's similar to what we were just talking about. Like, uh, you 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 can't today efficiently use like a regular language directly. Like, uh, like you can't write a Rust program um, and have it run efficiently uh, in you know for for some definition of efficiency. Um, uh, but um, but you can uh, you can build like a little library or framework. In, in a language that already exists, embedded in it. So that's what we did with OCaml, it's what we did with TypeScript. Um, and, uh, and, and, and you can, you can build, um, you can expose the lowest level. So, so like the, there are people who are like experts at optimizing constraints for the proof system. And then you can build abstractions over that. Uh, and with types, build um, you know, type structures, build computations. Um, and, and, and this has worked for building this enormous uh, system that we have in MENA, and uh, we see it starting to work as well for building really complicated applications with crazy recursion and all this stuff in, in SnarkyJS. Yeah, um, I think I disagree with everybody. Uh, <laughs> that's okay, that's why, you're, why we're here. <laughs> um, Go for so it. From like, uh, 
I, I think that using Rust, uh, at least for our use case, um, it would be a bit clunky to encode like um, semantics for like privacy, like private state and public state. So I mean, it, it, it's possible, but um, I think for the user, it'd just be a bit clunkier, uh, which is why uh, I think maybe if you're not using it for the privacy use case, then uh, high level languages like Rust and Go might work. Um, for uh, for for using TypeScript and uh, languages like that right now, um, when we were designing Noir, it just seemed like we needed to restrict the user from doing uh, very specific things that uh, it seems like in TypeScript they could just uh, counteract it. And uh, I guess one example that I always bring up is the if statements. Like uh, if you're using like a high level language, you sort of can't just do if something else something because in TypeScript or high level languages that works different from like a circuit based if, um, for example. So, so in Cairo, we actually uh, do uh, uh, like at the, like the, the, the runtime. So we don't evaluate uh, if statements. We only evaluate the path we take. So that's why. Uh, yeah, uh, of course I have a, a counter opinion to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, uh, um, the the costs uh, of of using a custom language, uh, in in my opinion, in my team's opinion, uh, severely outweigh the the benefits. So I guess just to talk about the if example, yes, you you can't use the built-in TypeScript if in the context of uh, like within a circuit. Um, but if you are if you are computing a value that you're then using in a circuit, you can use if statements. And and if you're if you're actually in the circuit, there are tools in, in the TypeScript ecosystem that can help us actually warn an or error to, to the user. Like we can use ESLint to provide an error if you're using an if statement in, in a place that uh, you shouldn't be. And and that and of course that won't be perfect, but um, we've found that that actually uh, is, is working really well. So I, I actually I'm agreeing with both of you. <laughs> So I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Um, I agree that um, you should have a, um, a, basically a specific language at the same time that um, that uh, I mean that tends to help you think about the, the computing model you are in, and at the same time you also want uh, language that are familiar to the public, already people that are already using. And so one solution that we I mean, first of all, I, I'm saying I didn't say about Cairo. So Cairo actually means CPU error. So roughly Cairo can ev evaluate any program. I don't know if it was clear to everyone here, but it's, do and, and notably what it means that there is two things that you get that you don't get in circuit usually, which is you only get, um, you get recursion, um, very easy recursion. You don't have to evaluate the whole circuit. And the second thing that you get for free is you only evaluate the if statement, the path you're taking. So when you have many, many ifs, then you actually only, you don't pay for all the branches, you only pay for the, the one you're using. And so, um, one consequence of this, one thing that we were able to do, or having all the team built, is they started to see trans uh, compiler from one, for instance, uh, high level, other level language to carry itself. So we have one right now, <coughs> a language uh, a compiler called Skyro, uh, made by a team uh, out of, of Switzerland, which is compiling Idris, Idris being a, um, a functional language, to Cairo. For the story, if you are, if you want to use it, you'll be the first one to ever use it. So have fun. Uh, I actually never found anyone who wants to use a functional language. So maybe there is one in this room. Uh, but uh, just think I like of, functional languages. So go for it, uh, Idris. Um, I but, love Idris. Uh, really? But so, so seriously, if you want to do have fun, go for it. Uh, seriously, it's it's crazy. But uh, but so I'm trying to say that um, I, I don't know if it's the ultimate path, but uh, um, they, they, there is like there is a middle ground. Can I? Uh, Please go. Yeah. So um, yeah. So uh, just uh, for for in in Snarky JS today connected to Kimchi. I mean, this is powered by Kimchi, of course. But uh, we we also can handle recursion, infinite recursion, and and in Snarky JS we've built an interface that's just it's like essentially the same as writing a recursive function. So you just you 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 know you you, you put your function in a JavaScript object. That's the only difference. Um, and whatever arguments you have, if you type them as like proof then uh, the system will know that you are trying to do something recursively, and it'll do all the complicated shit for you. Uh, and and in, your, in your code, you can just say, like, you know, if, if like, p is your proof, you just say, like, p.verify, um, and that sets up all the constraints um, for, for your circuit. Uh, and then, and then the, the other bit about the, the if statement branching thing, uh, like, today in, 
I think any proof system that I'm aware of, including Kimchi, including the current version of Kimchi, um, yeah, you, you have to pay for both branches, and you can kind of approximate branching by like multiplying by zero or one. Um, but we are uh, actually working on uh, an extension to the proof system uh, that um, will uh, will allow you to do these kind of like arbitrary jumps in an efficient way. And that though is, uh, you know, I'm not working on that and it's... How is it not a CPU? Like, you know, like basically uh, running in the arbitrary program then? Um, yeah. At, How is that not a VM basically? That's what my question at is. At that point, um, you, you get essentially the, the power of a VM with the performance of direct circuit. Yeah, so it's kind of the holy grail. And, and the, I mean, the intuition behind it is like, uh, there's, you know, there's like lookup tables and, and, and custom gates and all these things in Plonk. Um, you can sort of extend that to uh, allow um, for like arbitrary RAM like random access memory, and then you can kind of do another fancy thing to get arbitrary jumps efficiently. Um, and the, the details of this, I'd have to connect you with a cryptographer on my team. But um, I am told that this is the path that we're going towards. I've seen that. I've seen that in your repo. It's the dynamic lookup table stuff. Right. Yeah. Jordi has been silent for a while. <laughs> no, no. It's, at the end, it's, this is, uh, what are you writing? Hardware or software? If you're writing hardware, you need a hardware language. If you're writing software, my 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 opinion is just use uh, a, sta a standard software language, and uh, why? Because the hardware and, and and the problem is that you need the piece of hardware, you need the processor, the hardware that 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 can compile to this software. But this is there, so this is where to go. Cool. Um, I want to save some time for the audience to ask questions. We have about fifteen minutes, so any questions from the audience? So we actually touched on hardware a lot during this conversation. It'd be interesting to hear uh, from the different panelists, like what you actually see the kind of future of ZK hardware to be and like what direction it's going. It's not that kind of hardware we were talking about. I think we're, I think we're talking about <laughs> But yeah, we can talk about that too. But, but. No, we should. We, we, we can. We can talk about like real physical hardware as well. Yeah, we're talking about uh, polynomial hardware. It's like arith yeah, arith yeah. No. <laughs> arithmetic hardware. Yeah. I, I, I recognize I, that. I, I, I can. No, it's a, it, we're making a joke, but like, let's uh, on the hardware acceleration. So I'm going to take a hot, st uh, hot, st hot stake here. Um, Starkware at this stage do not believe that we need them. Um, as simple as that. Um, the reason is because the software itself is being improving so fast, and the structure, and the architecture of how you do things has been improving so fast that, at this stage, we we don't know what the future will look like. And so, what it means by this is, hardware development is roughly a year and a half before getting to production, and a year and a half from a year and a half ago, uh, Cairo were barely working. Starting was in premises, uh, recursion wasn't working. Um, we, and, and so for instance, the thing that we are working on right now, so we, we already do recursive, recursive proof on production today of our proof ourselves. But like for instance, one architecture we're not doing at the moment is um, basically a, a, a tree of proofs. Like basically right now, the only thing we do is we have what you call jobs and jobs are like, those StarkNet, Starkware infrastructure used all of that use Sharp and so all the customers and you start and included of their infrastructure are sharing the same proof so every every one of that is using is basically everyone is paying a marginal cost of the proof cost on that and so um, so for instance diversify or immutable like right now is having like 70 ps in their environment and they're using a significant amount of, of uh, step within this proof so they do one job and we have other proof and, and also another type of, of, of the job is a, is a proof so we um, so we don't really we didn't went all the way yet into that uh, tree architecture, and so for hardware um, there is already a significant like you know the, the, the things change so fast that we can't really say this is the way to go. That said, I have a friend of mine I guess uh, Omer Shlomovic from uh, uh, the company called wait uh, it's uh, Ingo Nyama, which is a very good friend of mine is also already working on this making a uh, groundbreaking improvement on hardware modular exponentiation, sh exponentiation or even like you know uh, MSM which I have no idea what it means but uh, I would let him to uh, you he's not here today but yeah I would let him uh, to answer that another day um, I, I yeah so different I guess slightly different opinion. Um, so in in uh, in Snarky, when you use Snarky JS for writing applications on Mina or just in general, we're encouraging um, 
the, the proof computation to happen actually like on the user's machine. Um, in this way, you get uh, privacy. <laughs> and and uh, you know, there's, there, there are ways that you can sort of do part of the computation on the machine to get the privacy and do the rest on a server, all these things. But um, when you have a proof system that has a lot of cool features in it, uh, like kimchi, um, it's, it's slower than a proof system that has a lot less features in it. Um, and uh, hardware acceleration would then kind of, you know, make it faster. I, I think it would be uh, cool. I, I guess, like, you know, we're encouraging people with Snarky.js to write uh, uh, circuits with recursion, with, with linear recursion or tree recursion. That's been working in, Mina, in Mina's mainnet for a year and a half sort of internally. And, and now on our decentralized testnet, we have, uh, you know, you can do it with custom circuits and, and settle on chain and all, all that stuff, and it works. Um, uh, and, and yeah, and it's a little bit slow right now. We're working on optimizing it. Um, but I, I am imagining a world, like I think a cool world would be one in which like the ledger that we all have um, or, or something like that, uh, that has our wallet on it, also would have like a, a snark accelerator uh, companionship or something. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't think that's coming anytime soon, but um, something like that could be cool. Um, and, and even like obviously in the shorter term, Taking advantage of like GPUs, FPGAs, and silicon, like at any level, I, I think would be helpful uh, because it would it, it makes these proof systems that are I think like have a lot more features, um, uh, more you know faster, so you can do different kinds of applications than you could if if they were slower. I would distinguish. This is actually a very. Um, um, very different. So, when we talk about zero knowledge proof. We can distinguish between the small, uh, small proofs and uh, big proofs because the, the big proofs are for ZKVMs and for uh, rollups and for when you want to do aggregation and this high computation stuff. And then small proof, more for example, they are more related to something like identity or a game or something that you want to run, especially in the client. Uh, I think in the client has uh, a lot of sense uh, because it's uh, it's where the hardware. You know, you are. Building, you do a, a, a big investment, but then you 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 can uh, spread to many mobile phones or to many uh, places. So this makes a lot of sense. And for things like you know these uh, privacy things, for for things like uh, uh, gaming, for things like uh, identity, uh, just ch proving things about your data, I know all these that. So uh, I think this makes uh, a, a lot of sense in in in, in that direction. For the hardware, um, so for the big things, and I'm talking more specific to maybe a specific project, which is the ZKVM, but as a representative, it is that. For us, we are, I tell you why we are interested in hardware. Uh, maybe here you will, you, will, uh, you will see why. The idea is that um, uh, in a, so if you want to have a competition, the, the idea is that you want to have a competition uh, uh, that a proving competition, you know, just uh, there is a market for 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 uh, generating proofs, big those those big proofs. Uh, here you can have there is a, a problem is that you have a centralized, maybe you have some provider that has a lot of power, and this monopolizes the 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 system. In the case of a CKVM, this is not a big problem because you can only build a proof that's already deterministic, so you cannot do crazy things, but you can degrade the network. So the problem is that somebody that has a huge power and is able to generate a lot of proofs maybe just uh, stops and uh, stops doing that and 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 then uh, uh, the, the the network just degrades. So in for us the way for us to 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 avoid that is to have the best the best prover available even in hardware when i'm saying hardware at least in fpgas or, or whatever even asics if it's required so but the idea is to have the best prover available open source and available for everybody so that there is no monopolistic uh prover that can take that that's why for us it's so important that the prover is open source that the prover is available for everybody and not only that that the technology to build the prover is available for for the community because this is the warranty that we have that the network would not be degraded uh, i won't even add to on top of this um in the context of starknet the way we are looking we're going to look at this uh, proving market is by actually having uh, 
like a, a kind of POS, like some mechanism where we have a leader who would be the proving one, and we have like a, in cascade another one, and second one would come afterwards uh, if there is a degradation. And so um, the the other thing is that I just want to say, which I forgot to say, and I, unless uh, I have to talk about that, but um, people have been very focusing a lot on on. Um, on acceleration because snark are very slow and, and very slow because the operation elliptic curve and so on uh, and some i mean the thing on, i mean i mean i mean at least uh jordi and i uh working more on starks which are much faster and much easier to to, to use to 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 work on on regular servers so i think that may be a difference on our take related to that machine i mean uh, so I'm going to answer the question I wanted to hear instead of the one you actually asked, because uh, <laughs> I don't really know much about uh, hardware acceleration. Uh, in terms of uh, programming for hardware versus programming for software, uh, I think proving systems are changing too much for uh, at least us to focus on uh, sort of being so close to the metal, just because the metal might change uh, next year or the year or the year after. Uh, I will say that for privacy, it's sort of a different space. Uh, if you have privacy, you need to sort of think about how to accelerate the prover, like because uh, we usually use WASM. Uh, whereas if you don't have privacy, it's really FPGAs and GPUs. Like, how do you accelerate uh, this this massive beefy machine? I I guess just to. Um there, there was this discussion about like uh, you know markets for decentralized provers, um, and this is just my. I just have to say this because too many people are surprised by this at this conference. Sorry if it's a little bit off topic, but Mina has a decentralized sequencers, decentralized provers, a marketplace for producing proofs um, that are sort of needed by the system, and this has been in production for a while, and uh, we. Um, encourage more people to look at it when they're thinking about their marketplaces and, and everything. Cool. Great answers. Thanks, guys. Okay. Um, I have a question. It's like maybe continuing on the hardware thing, but most of the, I mean, a lot of people kind of um, compiling target now is actually solidity so actually a lot of people are moving on ethereum and kind of this is defcon so like uh, the most artificial kind of constraints that i'm seeing is probably the fact that we have one pre-compile curve to work with right we can only work with bn 128 so I'm wondering what your intuition why why don't we have more curves to work with in wow. your opinion i don't know Wow, like it seems like it will kind of release a lot of, of um, the bottleneck. So, okay, I, I can make two comments. Uh, the first one is on the pure application level and why people should care about what you're describing. Um, so I think that one of the biggest original sin that uh, the Ethereum made when they were built, in all honesty, in retrospect, right, we couldn't know, is to have uh, had EOAs. Having EOAs was a mistake. But, the, and, 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 um, and you're right, having new curve, like you know, uh, being able to use the P256, the one that is on your phone, or even being able to do RSA verification, I mean, just to throw random ideas, right, um, would be unlocking a lot of use cases. I mean, just to give you an example, um, uh, StarkNet Brian is a company on gaming that is using that kind of abstraction to verify P256, the, 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 you're using your secure enclave of your phone to sign signatures for gaming. That's awesome, it's just awesome. Um, that's actually not, for me, the biggest, you know, lock of uh, verifying the EVM. The, the main difference, the main problem is that, um, um, is that you, the computing paradigm of the EVM is very different from what you have in ZK. I mean, uh, bits, Boolean logic is, is expensive and ZK is cheap on the EVM, right? So this is kind of the starting point. Um, and um, while, the, if, like, you know, the, a lot of team are looking into, I mean, diving, I mean, Jordi would talk more to me about that than me, um, about, you know, proving the EVM, uh, we didn't make that choice because we were, in our opinion, we were optimizing for, for performance of the proving system. And then now that we have that, can we backwork, make it backward compatible? And so we have, in our case, Warp, which is like a tooling that enables you to transpire from uh, Solidity to Cairo. And the practicality of it, 
I can't really judge. No one really used it in production, but they managed to recently announce they managed to compile Unifa V3, which is a significant uh, bit. And um, there are an existing effort right now to rewrite the VM in Cairo. So I don't know, once again, if it's a POC, if it's for fun, or I don't know. Maybe, maybe it would be practical. The truth is, I don't see the numbers. I won't believe it. Yeah. Going to your question. Um, why, uh, why not others? Um, I think maybe you should ask to the EF people maybe better. But what's clear is that uh, at least the BLS uh, 381, this is a must. And this is, will be introduced sooner or later uh, in, in Ethereum. Among other things, because uh, signatures, uh, so because all the all the staking stuff, it's is is done with uh, this BLS uh, stuff, and also BN. Well, at the beginning was that was not safe because there was something discovered, but then is much more safe than we thought that was safe. So it's it's there, you know. It's some there are some doubts of the BN Corp. So I think that sooner or later, Ethereum will have. There has been some efforts. I know that there has been some uh, stops uh, at some point uh, on this. This, this uh, Adding this, and here is, for example, uh, we are implementing the full EBM right now. You, you, we don't have to compile anything like that. We just get the code and, and put it there. Uh, doing that, well, has been an effort, but what are the difficult things? What 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 what's the what are the pieces that's really difficult to add? So we were able to 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 build the EBM, but there is one one piece that's complex. We will do it, but it's really difficult to do. It's um, the, this precompiled contract of the BN one. So complicating the complicating the uh, the layer ones uh, BMs. Uh, it's not a good thing, eh? and this is uh, there are you know there are some of course there are some mistakes. The EVM was created when was created, uh, Wasm was not even an option at that point. Just for you to just people to realize on that of zk nobody knew so <laughs> didn't exist. Uh, but uh, so here and and the, for what I've been hearing and what I see is that uh, the EVM should tend to simplify. Not to get more, not to get more complex, and this is, I think, this is uh, a feeling that uh, in Ethereum, the people that's working in Ethereum, uh, we have. Uh, EBM is probably too complex, and we need to tend to simplify the gas models, the, the you know, some opcodes, and and if you see the proposals that are uh, coming, are more in the not in extending the ABM, but in simplifying the ABM. And said so that, I think that the BLS is, is, is a must. Yeah, so um, I guess similar similar to, to uh, Stark, where we, we started not with EVM compatibility in mind for, for, for Mina um, and, and Snarky.js and our proof system, um, but differently from Stark, where we didn't, we didn't start with like performance in mind, because um, we're we're not trying to build like a zk zk rollup scalability solution. Um, we we were like, okay, there's all these cool things you can do with zk, uh, with with privacy and recursion, um, and and we want to build a proof system uh, that enables uh, people to take advantage of all those cool things. Um, and uh, and and so um, in the same vein as what you're talking about, like there's all these cool things now that you can do in in our proof system and, and on Mina. And you know we're working on an uh, Ethereum bridge so that the mean estate can just be fully verified from within Ethereum. And and the idea here is like we want to bring all these great features uh, to Ethereum developers. Um, but uh, you know like I guess TypeScript is you know people are writing front ends into TypeScript anyway, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, but uh, but yeah, rather rather than like kind of trying to put all these things inside EVM, it's like, okay, let's use, you know, efficient uh, elliptic curves and all these things uh, to, to do these interesting privacy and recursion, all this stuff, and then uh, wrap it up in a nice present that can be verified quickly on EVM. I, I can say my, my question is because, uh, you know, standards are evolving sometimes, and this is like a, like the, the hottest the metal will be in terms of zero knowledge uh, standards. So, some of the time, the constraints on the standards come from things that are not necessarily very efficient, and eventually downstream, you're, you, you don't understand how you got to something that is uh, using a certain 
aspect. So, so a lot of the down, downstream decisions are being taken because of, of that, right? We have baby job job because it fits the prime field. And, and I mean, it could be more efficient, so I'm asking like uh, kind of the, from the philosophical kind of aspect. Of, uh, At some point, you need to leave with, with there. That's the point, and 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 you 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 can I mean you know you can wish us uh, we we could wish and we did <laughs> many times you know uh, wish as much as we can but uh, the reality is that you you won't get to adapt I mean we may be all convinced here that the the future but maybe other people outside are not and so we you, it's a consensus everyone wants to agree on what's what's good so I tend to agree with Jordi we need actually I'm much more in favor of simplifying the network than doing it than than trying to bring more more things that, to make our our life simpler right now. And uh, just to give you an oh yeah, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> for, for this is, uh, look, in, in, in the CKBM circuit, we are using a different prime field. We are using the Goldilocks prime field. We are building a Stark. We are building a recursion of a Stark. We are doing a lot of crazy cryptography in there. And just in the last moment, we just built a Glow 16 or a Plonk. That just, but this is the last, last, the last piece. So it's like the, the adapter, if you want, uh, to the network. If, 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 so maybe the net, so maybe the ABM, you, you just need one thing. It's uh, hashes functions, hash functions. How many hash functions needs, uh, requires the ABM? Uh, mm, well, we have Ketchak, we have a, a, a Shadow 56, recently Ethereum added Blake. Uh, is it necessary? Maybe with Shadow 56 would be more in, more than enough from the beginning. You could argue that the pre-compile could have been, you know, like you, we could have made things cheaper, or in the first place, or maybe you know made, made things that are why if more so much more efficient as this pre-compile. You know, there's many things you could discuss in the back. In the back. But, but this is why why and why this is possible right now, and maybe and this is changed from three four years ago. It's because we have this validity proof. We can compute things out of chain and validate them on chain. So we just need to care how we validate these things on chain. And uh, BN one twenty eight, or if you want a BLS, uh, is more than is more than enough. So probably if the if the Ethereum had to be done now, uh, it would be less uh, cryptographic primitives and. Uh, more basic thing because we can we can we, we can accelerate that off chain uh, and and validate that uh, with, uh, with with validity proof on chain. And, and just to conclude on this, uh, if you want to have much more impact and make one change, changing I mean it's going very ballsy. Changing Ketchak by Poseidon might be more helpful. <laughs> No, because it, it, you, you change we posted on in which in which in which in which prime field. No, 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 no. It, it's it's it, it, yeah yeah, but that's 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 the thing you know. It's and I've been thinking you know all of us we have been, have been so, uh, thinking on that is why Poseidon is not in the or why the so we, why don't we have uh, Mimsy at some point uh, is not in the in the ABM and and this is the thing. But as we evolve as we evolve we see that this is less important because we have because this. Um, Computational proof are getting much faster and much better. So we require less this. So we can sacrifice a little bit of optimization. Right now we can look in 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 the, in the IBM circuit. We can we can validate for 500 ketchaks in the in the proof. We can validate uh, I don't know like something like 100 or 200 uh, uh, ECDSAs with the ECDSAs Ethereum corpse in there. We can do paintings inside there. We can do everything in there. It's, a li it's not optimal, but it's doable and it's, it's, it's getting every time more efficient. So at the point that we have this, we require less help from the L1. We require less help from that. So, so that's why I think that this tendency to simplify is, 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 is a trend. Oh, yeah. I, I also feel like proto dunk sharding is moving in that direction. Like, they introduced the pre compile for point evaluation for KZG. And, you know, then you can understand KZG proofs. But beyond that, it's all blobs, you know, it's all. Um, delegate it to the rollups. Well, we are, we are over time. So, 
There's one last question. Okay, ask it, ask it. Thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted to know that I see a lot of sense in like breaking this EVM ice and creating DSL, notably for like opening new area of innovation. And like your question to basically uh, Mina, I mean, w does it make sense for you also like, for example, to collaborate with Cairo and uh, maybe like, you know, since like it's better model for the ZK than uh, like uh, imperative languages? And uh, yeah, basically work on better tooling for uh, yeah. I mean operational ver verification. I, I think we are, we already are right. I mean, yeah. we we have uh, someone on on at O One Labs, which is like the the team that incubated Mina, um, is is looking into getting Cairo to work with with Kimchi. So. Yeah, and there is even one in the room who actually took her work and made it into work with Winterfell. Uh, so you can look at the guy in a very nice blue shirt over there, Max, uh, shoot out. Uh, so yeah, Max has a practical Cairo, a very a verifier and a prover uh, uh, in Winterfell today. Um, I mean, to be honest, it's actually go back to the question about simplifying stuff. Um, why the, we have now L2s, we have L2s that can do stuff. Um, Let's use their, their their advantage to bridge where we could do it before. And so, like you know, an example. Uh, there is a team actually maybe in the room actually over there. Uh, Snapshot X is working right now to do L1 voting using L2 to make them cheap, and that's something you couldn't do before. So that's this kind of thing that we can do with L2s now that we can do in L1, and we don't have to change L1 for that. So simplify, please. Cool. Thank you, all panelists.